Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We are being challenged by a series on the cosmic conflict, the great battle between good and evil, how it started in heaven, how it's impacted planet Earth through the centuries, how it impacts our lives today. I'm excited about today's topic, Standing for the Truth. And I'm excited that one of our team members, Puya, is going to lead our study today. And I'm glad that you're here and that we're together as we study the Word of God. So welcome to Hope Sabbath School. And we've got some remote team members. Rodney, always good to have you with us. Glad you're here. Glennie, good to have you back. And Leah, great to have you with us. We are so happy that you can be with us too because this topic of standing for the truth, why, Puya, I don't think it's ever been more important mm. than it is today. So I want to just thank you for writing to us wherever you are around the world, Hope Sabbath School members. It brings great encouragement. And this first email was very unusual. Mm. And I think you'll enjoy it. Written by Rassi. He's from South Africa, but he was writing to us from New Zealand. Now, you'll understand this first sentence in just a moment. He says, a left-handed wave to my brothers and sisters on the Hope team. Can you all wave with your left hand, please? Mm -hmm. Left-handed wave. You say, why? <laughs> I want to tell you about God's marvelous work in my life, Rassi writes. At age 19, I joined the South African Air Force and was returning to the airport in the back co cockpit of a Harvard aircraft after a refresher period of instrument flying. My instructor took over the controls, put the aircraft into a steep dive simulating a rocket attack, but due to a very strong tailwind, he mistimed the recovery and the aircraft collided with the ground at 180 knots. I'm, I've got to open the page up here because after 500 meters, the remainder of the aircraft finally came to a standstill. Wings torn off, engine off. But he said, I had not broken one bone in my entire body. Wow. wow. But then the plane exploded. You thought it was going to be easy, right? I sat in the fire as high as the trees until my harness burnt through and farm workers pulled me out of the burning wreck. I was airlifted to a military hospital by helicopter, having sustained 100% burns, 68% third degree burns, was in ICU for six months fighting for my life. Mm. Due to my burns, my right arm was amputated and the muscles and nerves severed above my right ankle. You know, now you understand the left wave? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right arm amputated. But here's God's marvelous work in my life. You can say amen at any point, okay? Amen. I lived. Amen. 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 Praise Jesus. Amen. I qualified as an attorney, notary, and conveyancer in a record time of four years. Wow. Amen. I played league squash, though I was told my sports days were over. Mm. I was selected to represent South Africa in two world one-arm golf competitions. Okay. Mm -hmm. I married my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since we were 16, mm -hmm. you know, that's a dedicated love yeah. that will love you through losing your right arm. Right. And, uh, you, yeah, 100% mm -hmm. of your body burned. We have three sons and seven grandchildren. Amen. Someone ought to say praise God. Amen. Amen. I obtained my private pilot's license and guided by the Holy Spirit, I joined the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I watch Hope Sabbath School. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he wrote to us. And I look forward, look at this last line, I look forward to clapping hands when Jesus appears in the clouds of heaven. Wow. God. Amen. Amen. Got the other hand back. Amen. Amen. Rassi, thanks for writing to us. Mm -hmm. You've certainly got much to give thanks to God for, and you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
Margaret writes from the Solomon Islands. She says, I'm watching from the Solomon Islands. I'm so thankful for your testimonies. They give me hope to hold on to the grace of God. Amen. So share your testimony today as we study about standing for the truth. Mm -hmm. Here's a little handwritten note from a donor in Michigan. Thank you. You know who you are as I read. My husband and I have always enjoyed watching Hope Sabbath School. My dear husband went to rest in Jesus in January. He's so missed, but we have a great hope. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Enclosed is a donation so that this work can continue. And a donation of $500 amen. to bless the global evangelistic work. God bless you, sister. God knows who you are, and you know who you are, too, because I just read your note. Thank you for being part of this global ministry. And thank you to each one of you. We're a donor-supported ministry. Go to our website, or you can write a note just like this one, hopetv.org slash hopess. You'll find the address, or click on the donate button and say, I want the message of God's unfailing love to go to the world so Jesus can come back soon. Mm -hmm. And we'll be together with our loved ones again. One last note from Michelle in Australia. Michelle writes and says, I wish to thank you all for making this program so interesting because of the interactive nature of the program and the different stories from each of the team members. Mm -hmm. It is so awesome to be able to worship with you all. Amen. I thank you again. Mm -hmm. thank well, Michelle, thanks for writing to us right now. We'd like to have you sing our theme song, but before we do, don't forget about that valuable resource for this series on the cosmic conflict. It's the book, The Great Controversy. You might say, Derek, I have that book. It's, it's an amazing book. Well, if you go to our website, click on the free resource tab, it's available in more than 100 languages, in, in Ashanti and in Danish and in, give me another language. Burmese. Burmese, yes. <laughs> Share it with your friends and say, hey, I know you'd love to read this in, in your mother tongue. We've got this amazing book about this cosmic battle between good and evil. Just go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. Click on the free resource tab. But right now, will you sing our theme song with us? It's taken from Isaiah 55, verses 6 and 7. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Let's sing it together. You know, Puya, I wish that we could hear all of the Hope Sabbath School members singing. Mm. Wouldn't that be beautiful? That would be. Well, right now, why don't you lead us in prayer as we study about standing for the truth? Yes. Let us pray as we begin our study. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you for this time where we can open your word, study them, and apply them to our lives. We pray for the guiding of the Holy Spirit not only for those of us who are here in the studio and our remote participants, but we pray for all of our Hope Sabbath School members who will be watching this from all over the world. Amen. We pray Bless that them. you will guide every single person, no matter where we are at, through the study of this Word. May your Holy Spirit uh, bring out the lessons you want all of us to learn so that we may stand for the truth when the time comes. 
This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we are now on part four of this series that we are currently studying on the cosmic conflict, mm -hmm. a battle or a war or a controversy that has begun in heaven and it has affected the entire universe. We are now on lesson number four and the title of our study today will be Standing for the Truth. Mm. Just to give us context of where we are for lesson number four, in our previous lessons, we have learned that a war broke out in heaven. Lucifer challenged God, claiming that he could be a better leader. He could be a better God, basically, like the Most High. And he was able to convince one third of the heavenly angels, mm. brought them down mm -hmm. to the earth. And unfortunately, according to our previous study from the Word of God, we have learned that this planet Earth joined the rebellion by disobeying the commands of God. And unfortunately, ever since then, throughout the history of the entire world, history that we have studied, we see this great controversy, this cosmic level conflict mm. playing in this world, in the lives of people. Mm -hmm. And today we will look at especially uh, the lives of God's children, the followers of God in the New Testament, as well as in the history of the church. So let's go to our Bible, let's go into our Bible, to Daniel chapter 7, verse 23 to 25. And let me request Harold mm -hmm. to start our study by reading Daniel 7, verse 23 to 25. And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. And it reads, Thus he said, As for the fourth beast, there shall be a fourth kingdom on earth which shall be different from all the kingdoms, and it shall devour the whole earth and trample it down and break it to pieces. And for the ten horns, out of this kingdom ten kings shall arise, and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the former ones and shall put down three kings. He shall speak words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And he shall think to change the times and the law, and they shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time." Wow, thank you, Harold, for reading that. We see so many symbols in this text, right? We see horns, we see bees, and we see symbolic times, like time, times, and half a time. Maybe somebody's studying with us for the first time and wondering, what does this all mean? The fort beast? What does that mean? So let's, let's quickly go through that. Um, maybe somebody can explain to us the context of Daniel chapter 7. Um, um, Kenneth, help me here. Um, if the text here tells us that this is the fort beast, how many bees were there before? That means that... Previously, there were three. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so in Bible prophecy, it's important to understand the context in which the author wrote it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because Daniel wrote this right um, during captivity, we can then understand that, okay, Daniel was receiving visions about the future. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in history, if we look at the different kingdoms that have come through uh, the world, especially in the context of Daniel 7, the first beast would represent Babylon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second beast would yeah. represent, Medo, anybody want to help me? Medo-Persia. Medo Medo what about the third beast? Greece. 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 And then finally we come to this uh, fourth beast. That would be the kingdom that defeated uh, the Greek Empire. What was that kingdom? Rome. The Roman Rome. Empire. So now we come to the kingdom of Rome. Can somebody share with us from history um, in what way did the kingdom of Rome or the empire of Rome persecute God's saints? Because Daniel prophesied that this fourth kingdom right, would persecute God's saints. Mm. Anyone want to share with us from history? Harold, I see your hand. Well, um, unfortunately, the Romans uh, did... One, they wanted many people to, of course, follow their gods, mm. but they also had these Colosseums where t for entertainment, and many times they would even you put Christians in there. Mm. 
But don't get me wrong, because we can't forget that the Romans also conquered Jerusalem, and it's interesting that they never forced them. But what happened was the Jews eventually instigated the state, mm. Romans, saying, hey, these Christians are causing too much commotion. Mm. And there it seemed that they want to take over the kingdom. Obviously, lives were being shared. And of course, th that went to the attention to the Romans, and the Romans started you know, persecuting the Christians. And this is the imperial Rome. I'm mm. talking about imperial Rome. Right. The imperial Rome persecuted many followers of God. Right. Yeah. Scott, I see your hand. You know, in imperial Rome, one of the big crimes was atheism. And because Christians didn't worship idols, they were sometimes accused of being, of Atheist. being atheists and they were persecuted. And then later on, as, as Rome became a religious power, there was still persecution over, over worship because those who didn't, didn't worship the way that Rome decreed that worship should take place mm. then faced persecution for not conforming. All right. Thank you. Oh, Pastor in, in, in a culture of, of a pagan Rome, mm. uh, you say, well, I guess that would make sense. They would persecute, especially if they wouldn't call Caesar mm. Lord. Right. They said, no, Jesus is Lord, mm -hmm. right? We're not going to sure. let you deify a person, mm -hmm. a Caesar, and tell us to worship Caesar. Mm -hmm. What's troubling in the transition is you would think when that authority is shifted mm -hmm. to papal Rome, right. Right. that the persecution of Christians would cease. Mm -hmm. right. mm. But according to the prophecy, that would not be the case. Right. So the next question I was trying to ask was to lead into this point that you have brought up. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting that Daniel prophesied that out of this fourth beast would come out ten horns. Mm -hmm. And not only did Daniel give us the symbol, but the meaning of those horns. Mm -hmm. And anybody remember uh, what Daniel said about the meaning of the symbols of the horns. King. Semiso. In, in verse 24 it says 10 kings. All right. So we, so we can just go back into history and compare it with the Bible and we know that when the Roman Empire fell apart there were about 10 kingdoms that came out or divided into sub-kingdoms. Mm -hmm. And according to the prophecy a little horn would come out. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor Derek has hinted that. So, the question here is, who was that little horn that grew out of the fourth beast and persecuted God's saints? Uh, Kailinda. The little horn speaks pompous words. It mm -hmm. implies that it is a spiritual organization that claims to have the authority of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, as Pastor Derek mentioned, pagan Rome, when it fell apart, was somewhat taken over by a new form of organization or a new form of power in the form of a religious power, as mm -hmm. Kailinda mentioned, a religious institution now under the leadership of the papal, uh, the papal Rome. Mm -hmm. My question is, in what way did the prophecy of Daniel was fulfilled? Uh, in what way did this papal Rome persecute God's saints? Think about historically, right? The, bi mm. the Bible states and history confirms about the period of Inquisition. Mm. Now the Inquisition was a judicial proceeding which was meant to combat uh, heresy. Mm. So essentially, if you did not believe in what they believed, you'd be killed. Mm. And it reminds me that as we exercise our religious freedom, uh, Christ never forced anyone. Mm. He persuaded and showed them truth. Uh, many times we want to persecute, maybe not physically, maybe mm. it's to legislate laws, but Christ is all about free will and any time when we use force. So historically, mm. the church in that time did in fact persecute people who did not believe what they believed. Right, and that is the sad part of the history of Christianity as we look back into the past, because the church, the organization that claimed to be the representative of God on earth, mm -hmm. was going against the teachings of God and persecuting God's people. Scott. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, one specific example that comes to mind is um, the followers of um, a guy named Waldo, the Waldensians, mm -hmm. who um, believed in sharing the scripture 
around to all the people they came in contact with. Many of them were merchants and traveled widely and, and because they were trying to spread the scripture and, and because the scriptures threatened the religious authorities mm. th with the truth, that many of the Waldensians were persecuted and they were forced to live high in remote mountainous areas where they couldn't be easily found. And, and it was a big old persecution for the mere crime of sharing the scripture. Wow. In fact, many of them were, you know, in, if you read the book that Derek mentioned earlier, The Great Controversy, it, it chronicles the stories of the Waldensians that you mentioned. They, hi they had to hide in caves and they were still burned to death. Many of them were pushed off the cliff. Many of them were killed with the sword. So many people died simply because they wanted to share the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Rodney, I see your hand. I'm delighted that we're walking this through using the scripture and also history. Because once we got to the point of pagan or imperial Rome, uh, no other power really uh, conquered Rome, just like Rome would have conquered Greece and Greece conquered Media Persia, Media Persia, uh, Babylon. We see here where the Ten Kingdoms came about as a result of some form of disintegration, really, of the, Rome, the pagan Roman em Empire. But this point that we're at, the junction that you're at, um, no, no, Puya, is very important because the, the Papal Rome is a religio-political power. Mm. So it's using um, the, 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 the religion and also the power of the state mm. to carry out the, the, um, the persecution that we're talking about, burning of, at the stake or being eaten by lions or dismemberment, mm. uh, those kinds of um, crimes. And, and so this juncture is very, very important for us to understand because we will see that the hand of God is going to still sustain his people mm. even through challenging times. Amen. So it's very important, this juncture that we're at is very important to not only see you know, what, they, what the evil one is doing, but also what God is doing to sustain his people. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Rodney, for that. Uh, Samantha, can you r take us to John chapter 16, verse 1 to 4? I, I, I believe it's important to look at the prophecies predicted by Jesus himself about what his disciples or the followers of his teachings would have to go through eventually. Can you, can you read for us John chapter 16, verse 1 to 4, please? I will read from the New King James Version, John 16, 1 to 4. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues, yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the begin beginning, because I was with you. Mm. Mm. Wow, thank you mm -hmm. for reading that. So looking at the big picture, who is working behind the scene mm -hmm. using institutions like the empires, the kingdoms, including the church, to persecute the followers of Jesus? Who is the evil mastermind behind the scene? Satan. Satan. Satan, right? This is the great cosmic conflict that we have been studying. Mm -hmm. This war began in heaven, and now it has been continuing in the history of the church. Uh, Glenny, I see your hand. Mm -hmm. Yes, reading this verse um, also reminded me of a conversation I was having with some friends the other day. I tend to be a little oblivious about uh, the current political climate or even history, but um, I was gleaning a lot of information through what they were talking about with what's going on currently, what uh, connecting to what happened in the past and scripture. And it made us question things like, why is God allowing these things to happen? But then, like you just mentioned, it, it is the devil who's behind it. But there's so much comfort we can get uh, in John chapter 16, verse 4. Um, one, one thing this friend pointed out was if Jesus didn't care. He wouldn't have told us what will happen. 
knew this would happen and he cared and he i think that's why it's so important to study prophecy so we know that even through the midst of the storms he knew he knows and that's enough because we can hold on to the fact that he knows and he's there that's powerful thank you for sharing so when we see the fulfillment of jesus prophecy we should not be surprised that his followers are going through persecution right um i want us to look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, and uh, pick up on that note of positive uh, promise amidst negative persecutions and sufferings uh, that Jesus gives us ahead in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. And let me ask Sabina if you can read for us Revelation 2, verse 10, please. Yes, so I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and Revelation 2, verse 10 says, do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Mm. Be faithful even to death. the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. <coughs> So Jesus is helping us understand the bigger picture mm -hmm. that even if you lose your life for the sake of His cause on this earth, mm -hmm. that is not the end, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. There is the promise of the crown of eternal life mm -hmm. that is waiting for you. Amen. What a beautiful promise. Mm -hmm. You know, Pui, I'm really struggling mm -hmm. with what Jesus said. I mean, I believe it. But how a person could think that killing mm. Christians would be doing service for God. Mm. But Jesus prophesied they would. Prophesied it. Mm -hmm. they, they would be, think they were doing service for God. And the only answer is that they don't know the scriptures. Mm. Because if they knew the scriptures, yeah. they would be able to test whether these were genuine followers and whether the organization they were connected to mm. was in apostasy or was faithful to the word of God. Right. So when we lose connection with the word of God, mm. we can believe any lie. Mm -hmm. That is so true. Mm -hmm. That is so true. I want us to move on to the next part of our study. Uh, in this first part, we saw that the persecutions that were coming were already prophesied ahead, not only by Daniel, but Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we will also see that the scripture also prophesies ahead the apostasy that was going to come into the church. Mm -hmm. In the previous lesson, we have studied a little bit of this, but let us go to Jude uh, 1 to 4. Um, there's only one chapter, in a way, so we'll just say Jude 1 to 4. And Leah, if you can kindly read for us Jude 1 to 4, let's see what the author of the letter uh, that, oh, Jude himself, right? He was the author. So what did he has to say to encourage Christians? I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, and it reads, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, beloved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Thank you for reading that. Uh, before we look at that text deeper, uh, some scholars believe that Jude could be the stepbrother of Jesus, mm -hmm. like uh, another son of Joseph before he married Mary because mm -hmm. Jude described himself as the brother of James, right? James became mm -hmm. a leader. And so it's interesting that somebody who was so close to Jesus calls himself a bond servant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish I could write to you, but there's some bigger concern that I want to encourage you. So my question is, why did Jude write to the early Christians and ask them to contend for the faith that was delivered to the saints? Why was he concerned? Harold. 
Well, Jesus already said that there will be ravenous wolves ah. already. Even Paul warned his people, the, the, the churches that he was ministering to, that after his departure, mm. there's going to be people who will bring divisions and confusion and deception. Mm. Because Satan, would, that's his job, is to distort the character of God, and destroy the work of Jesus. Mm. Mm. Thank well, you. Kalinda. So many people now have a misconception of who Jesus is and are afraid of Him or don't believe in Him because of the church. Mm. So as representatives of Christ, we need to reflect His love. Mm. That, is so, that is so important. So Jude prophesies ahead in a way that mm -hmm. false teachings, false ideas about God will come into the church. So you need to stand for the truth, right? You need to stand mm -hmm. firm on the Word of God. Now, Samantha, I see your hand. I'll take your comment. And after Samantha, I want us to go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 25 again. And somebody can, if you can, uh, let me ask uh, Tendi, if you can go to Daniel chapter 8, verse 9 to 12, and we'll look at those texts, two texts after Samantha's comment. Yes, it's as Jesus, uh, He also prophesied. He, he, and I just want to share something quickly from Matthew 10, verse 16. Okay, give us time. Matthew 10. Yes, um, I'll read it from the New King James Version. All right. Matthew 10, 16. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, you said? Yes. All right. Okay, it says, verse 16, Behold, I sent you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And mm -hmm. I don't know if I can just go down quickly to 17. Beware of men, they will deliver you up to the councils and scourge you in their synagogues. Mm. And so, you know, Jude is also prophesying, but Jesus told us that we will be hated by men. By we, the church himself. Yes, itself. we'll be brought before councils and, and, and synagogues mm. to, to, to give, uh, to speak as to what we believe and why we believe it. And so, as you said, we're, we're encouraged to stand firm, mm. not to lose heart, because it was prophesied that this will happen. Mm. Thank you mm. for that comment. Kenneth, can you yeah. take us back to Daniel 7, 25, and let's look at what other ungodly work is the little horn uh, supposed to do according to this prophecy? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it reads, he shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the sin shall be given unto his hand for a time and times and half a time. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Tendi, can you take us to Daniel 8, 9 to 12? And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, and it reads, out of one of them came a little horn, which grew exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east, and toward the glorious land. It grew great, even to the host of heaven, and some of the host and some of the star it threw down to the ground and trampled on them. It became great, even as great as the prince of the host, and the regular burnt offerings was taken away from him, and the place of his sanctuary was overthrown, mm. and a host will be given over to it together with the regular burnt offering because of transgression, and it will throw the truth to the ground, mm. and it will act and prosper. Wow. Mm. Mm. So from those texts we just read, on top of persecuting God's people, mm -hmm. what would the little horn power, which we have looked, which we have explained as the institution of the Church of Rome, uh, would do according to this prophecy? On top of the persecution, mm -hmm. Harold, into they want to uh, uh, usurp the power of God, like basically trying to be God on earth. Mm. Mm -hmm. and receive the worship that is due to God. All and right. that's actually Satan's work. It's just Satan getting worship through this little horn. Right. Mm -hmm. There were a few words that the prophecy specifically mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, Ken, uh, Simiso. D daily sacrifices were taken away. Right. Sacrificial system, which is a 
system that God had put in place for us to understand the plan of salvation, yeah. mm -hmm. where we can understand that salvation is by grace through faith in the work of God, the finished work of God. Mm -hmm. But according to this prophecy, this religious power, the little horn, would come up with false ideas about sacrificial system, where you have to earn, you have to do something to earn salvation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, did it also mention something about the little horn trying to change some things? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. God. Laws. Yeah, trying to change the times and laws, and which goes along with the one that I was going to mention, where it says that he threw the truth to the ground. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So in what way did this prophecy become fulfilled in the history of the church? How did the papal Rome change or try to change God's times and laws? Mm. Anyone? Uh, Harold, I see your hand. Well, we see that the early church actually had their own set of Ten Commandments compared to the Ten Commandments uh, in the Bible. Mm. Like if you look at the second, I believe the second and the fourth commandment, they're very different. Like one, one and I, I think also the Tenth Commandment was separated into two. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't I can't quote them uh, word for word. But if you do the comparison, you'll see that there's a drastic change. I believe there was one specific commandment in the early, the, the Second Commandment about not worshiping idols, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we look back into church history, we can see that a lot of pagan teachings were brought into the church mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the attempt to be more open-minded and be more accepting of people, yeah. right. but at the expense of compromise mm -hmm. from the Word of God. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Uh, Scott? Mm -hmm. You know, there was an attempt from very, it began very shortly after the New Testament period finished of changing the day of worship that God had, had set aside and, and switching mm -hmm. it to Sunday to try to break association with Judaism. And, and they came up with all sorts of reasons that sounded good. Mm. But ultimately, it was a change in what God had said. God said the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. And many people said, no, we're going to worship on the first day. And in fact, we're even going to persecute those who stick with what God says. Mm. Thank you. Tendi. Um, so this topic is called Standing for the Truth. Mm -hmm. And one of the groups of people that were persecuted for standing for the truth who refused to... Um, what compromise their faith was the Waldenses. Mm. Um, Scott mentioned that they were persecuted, they lost their property and they ran to the mountains. While in the mountains where they took refuge, they continued to worship their God. And one thing they're famous for was committing scripture to memory mm. and passing it, passing it on from generation to generation. Mm. So they refused to conform to this um, little horn power. Mm. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Glenny, can you take us to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, and let's look at the warnings that Paul gave ahead um, for the Christian church in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering toward, together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Mm -hmm. mm, wow. Mm. So Paul prophesies ahead that there will be a falling away. The church would go apostate. Mm. There would be so many deception that would creep in. Now let's remember in the context of the overall theme that we're looking at, this is the cosmic conflict. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. It's important to remember that the enemy, the real enemy, the mastermind, the evil mastermind behind the scene has always been Satan. Mm -hmm. right? it's, it, it's important if we look at the contrast between the strategy that he has used. Mm -hmm. In the earlier part of Christian history, he used persecution mm -hmm. to stop the movement of Christianity or the growth of God's people. 
-hmm. But he saw that it wasn't working. Yeah. The more people, the more Christians were killed, the more they grew. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the enemy changed his strategy. And now instead of persecuting, the church was given authority to work hand in hand with the state, as Rodney mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. and then apostasy mm -hmm. crept in. So from our, from our study, we have already seen that the Word of God mm -hmm. prophesies all of these ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Tendi and Scott had mentioned the Waldensians. I wonder if it had to do with the fact that they studied the lives of the disciples who were persecuted for their faith, mm -hmm. that they were strengthened too, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Why don't we go look at some examples of the mm. disciples of Jesus Himself who were persecuted. Let's go to Acts chapter 5, verse 12 to 18. Rodney, if you can read for us Acts 5, 12 to 18. Let's look at how the early disciples of Jesus were uh, treated by the religious leaders of that time. I'm reading from the New King James Version, Acts chapter 5, verses 12 to 18. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared join them. But the people esteemed them highly. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Hmm. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then the high priest rose up and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees. And they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Wow. All right. Mm -hmm. So in the same way that the Christians in the time of the Waldenses were persecuted by the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The disciples of Jesus themselves were persecuted by the religious leader and the religious institution yeah. of that time. I mean, isn't it a wonderful thing to see people being healed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we be celebrating when we see people being right. set free mm -hmm. yeah. from their bondage? Yeah. And yet the reaction was to put them into prison. I wish we have the time to read the entire chapter uh, but let's go down to verse 41 and 42 of the same chapter, Acts 5. And Kenneth, if you can take us there, let's see the response of the apostles of Jesus after they had been intimidated and beaten by these religious leaders. Reading from the New King James Version. Mm -hmm. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy mm -hmm. to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Wow. How, what lessons can we learn from <laughs> the disciples who went through persecution as well as the early Christians down through, not just the early Christians, but Christians down through the ages of history who have suffered because they stood for the truth? Mm -hmm. I think the first thing is that whenever, as a believer in Christ, when you stand for the truth, mm. you are in harmony with God's Word and mm. you are living by it, mm. is, it attracts the attention of the evil one mm. and persecution will follow. So when you, as a Christian, you are living your life not in harmony with the Scriptures, mm. then it seems I mean, the devil somehow sees that you're not doing anything that will attract his attention. So these disciples, they were just following the instruction that Jesus gave them. So as they carry out this instruction, they begin to suffer the indignation of the evil one. Mm, mm -hmm. That is very important. Uh, I see Rodney and Samantha. I'll come first to Samantha and then Rodney. Yes, the lesson that I have taken is that 
I can or we can rejoice through tribulation because mm. mm. in that way we get to share in Christ's suffering. Mm. Wow, mm. powerful. Rodney, share with us your thoughts here. In, in general, Puya, I'm seeing that the evil one will use anyone and anything mm. to accomplish his goal. Mm. We see here from the very beginning of our study and even in previous studies, He's using an entire religious system mm -hmm. to accomplish his goal. But thank God, on the flip side of that, there is the encouragement to us that we should keep faithful. Just keep mm -hmm. faithful. Just keep faithful. Mm -hmm. And he will reward us. Here it is. These disciples were faithful to the truth, faithful to God. And he preserved their lives. And so it is with us today when we're going through our challenges there are many individuals around the globe, including some of us who are being persecuted in different ways. Mm. The admonition to us is keep faithful, keep faithful to God, and he will ultimately deliver us. Mm. Mm. Powerful, powerful. So many lessons that we can learn. Kailinda and then Scott. Mm -hmm. In Hebrews, it says, for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. Mm. And there's a mystery about joy and suffering, which I'm not sure that I fully understand, mm. but I know that persecution is not necessarily a sign that God is against us mm -hmm. and God promises to be with us through suffering. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Scott. You know, this, um, this study, this discussion has reminded me of Ephesians 6 uh, verses 10 and 11 because it, it talks about how we can respond when we face persecution. Ephesians 6. Would you like to read 10 that 11? for us? Yes, please. All right, let's go there. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6. 6 and verses 10 and 11. Mm -hmm. and it says in the English Standard Version, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. And it goes on to talk about what that armor is and how God can give us the strength because all these people we look at in history, whether it's, whether it's the apostles, whether it's the Waldensians, whether it's the reformers, all of these people had to make a choice. Mm. Were they going to stand for what they knew to be truth mm. or were they going to take the easy way out? Mm. And they chose to take a stand and they used that the strength that God gave them mm. to be a witness to future generations. Mm. Powerful, powerful. So we see Satan, the master, the enemy, uh, the mastermind, the evil mastermind behind the scene trying to crash out the movement of uh, Christ, the mm -hmm. disciples, but we see that down through the ages of history, God has always had a faithful few mm -hmm. who would always stand for the truth no matter what, mm -hmm. even at the cost of their lives. It's so inspiring mm -hmm. to look at these lives. Thank Derek. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Puya. I was thinking back um, of that idea of the remnant, mm -hmm. the, the faithful remnant. Even in Acts chapter 6, it says many priests became obedient to the faith. Mm -hmm. mm. So we might look back and say, well, all those bad people. But there was a remnant that when they heard the teaching of the Messiah, mm. Nicodemus, Joseph right. of Arimathea, mm. the, there, uh, but it says many priests, the Spirit of God convicted them mm. that they were part of a system mm. that had gone astray because the system had rejected Messiah. Right. And we see that uh, as has been pointed out, down through the ages, you know, it's easy to say, well, that was, a, you know, those are bad people. No, mm. the system went right. bad, mm -hmm. but there was, and we've named some, mm -hmm. always a faithful remnant of men and women mm. who, who sought to follow God and honor His Word. Right. And, and there will be that remnant, according to Revelation, mm. right, in the end time. Right. Who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Beautiful. Um, so that's the, that's the good news. That's the good news. In the battle. Standing, Standing for, the, for truth. the truth. On that note, with, I want to ask the team here to name some uh, names, uh, individuals who were known for standing for the truth and bringing back the truth that were compromised during what we would call this period, the dark ages where the truth of God was hidden. Does mm -hmm. any name come up to your mind? In the previous lesson, we have mentioned a few, but let's, mm -hmm. let's refresh our memory quickly here. Kailinda. 
Previously, we talked about Jan Hus or Jan John Hus, Hus. Mm -hmm. and he said that religious leaders should be held to a high accountability. He also was uh, uh, encouraging that religious texts be translated into the common language or the mm. native language of people. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Uh, Harold, who comes to your mind? Well, another person is William Tyndale. William Tyndale. And, and he also, he was, I think, an Englishman, and he wanted also the Bible to be translated. And I think he successfully translated some portions of the New Testament, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. Unfortunately, he died at the stake. Um, but yet he did not like, uh, his faith wasn't wavered, like he was always mm. firm. I mean, he knew that this was the consequence of st standing in the truth. And he wanted obviously everybody to be teachers. It wasn't just something relegated to the priests of the church. It's like everybody should have access, th the gospels for everybody. Amen. There seems to be a common thread here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking of, of uh, our new president of Hope Channel International, mm. oh, wow. uh, Vyacheslav Demian, right. who grew up in the USSR. Mm. And, and, you know, he grew up in a culture, including his father, who was a pastor, mm. where people were persecuted. They were sent to Siberia to labor camps mm -hmm. uh, simply for believing that there is a God in heaven mm. Mm -hmm. at, who loves us and has a purpose for our lives. It wasn't just during the Dark Ages, right? Right. Mm -mm. And we could name other countries, and I... I hesitate because I realize we have Hope Sabbath School members in those countries yeah. right. mm -hmm. that you know well, mm -hmm. where people are being persecuted right. just for following Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I'm just so encouraged that, there, that God has always had a remnant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who stand for the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting that you mention our new president of Hope Channel International, Vyacheslav Denyam, because I heard that from his story, he typed out the Bible with a typewriter mm -hmm. when it was not available for people to have the scripture. Yeah. Wow. And I was just going to mention mm -hmm. that the common thread that I see mm -hmm. in these reformers is their love for the Word of God, Amen. Amen. right? Amen. The Word of God brings to us mm -hmm. the, the light mm -hmm. from God, the true understanding of who He is. And that's what the enemy is afraid of. Yeah. Yeah. This controversy is all about uh, the enemy trying to distort our understanding of God. One of the false ideology that also crept into the church during this dark ages period was the idea that God would punish people in hell, burning them forever and ever and ever for eternity. Right? That idea mm -hmm. does not originate from the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's a false ideology. And that has actually influenced so many people to give up their faith in the idea of a loving God. Mm -hmm. Right? But the good news is, as we have mentioned, mm -hmm. God always had a faithful few who would restore this truth once again for everyone to be able to read it. Now, let's come to the last part of our study here. Since all these people love the Scripture so much, <laughs> let's find some hope and encouragement and promises from the Word of God that can also give us strength and encouragement when we go through persecution ourselves, right? So I want to ask the team here, including our remote team members there, Rodney, Leah, and Glennie, what, what scripture comes to your mind uh, that gives you hope or promise that would strengthen you in times of persecution? Mm. Samantha. Um, so I have Psalms 34, verses 7 and 8. Psalm 34, verse Psalm. 7 and 8. Yes. I believe this is about God's protection, right? Yes, mm -hmm. um, and it reads that from the New King James Version, Psalms, Psalm 34, verses 7 and 8, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear Him and deliver them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in Him. Amen. 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 Beautiful, beautiful. Any other promises from the Word? Harold. Yes, uh, Psalm 18, verses 1 through 3. Psalm 18, verses 1, 2, 3. You know, Pastor Derek, sometimes in my travel, some whole Sabbath school family members from around the world would ask me, are these scriptures all scripted? Do you give them ahead of time? And I said, no, it's just, you know, sometimes Holy Spirit the Holy guides. Spirit guides us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take us there, Harold. And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. 
I love you, O Lord, my strength. Mm. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. Mm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Powerful. Scott, I see your hand. And Rodney, I'll come to you after Scott. Yes. You know, before we were, um, we filmed, we were talking about one of my favorite passages that you also mentioned, and that's in Hebrews chapter 10. Mm, Hebrews and 10. I was glad that you mentioned it because it's also one of my favorites. Um, it's beginning of verse 23. Mm. Hebrews chapter 10, beginning of verse 23. Yes. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promises faithful. Mm. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Amen. Powerful, Amen. powerful. One last text from Rodney. Mm -hmm. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 16. It's one of my favorite. 1 Thessalonians 4 16. and verse 16. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. There. Take us there, please. Mm -hmm. New King James Version. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, mm. with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So no matter what happens to us in this life, we know that God will deliver us. Yes, but ultimately mm -hmm. from this life, we will rise and to see his face uh, in peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank Amen. you. Amen. I want to appeal to our viewers, Hope Sabbath School members around the world, as we have looked at this study on standing for the truth. No matter what you may go through in your future or no matter what you may be going through right now, I encourage you to look at these faithful people of God, followers of Christ, who stood for the truth, who stood for the Word of God, because they understood that there is a greater cosmic battle that is going on, and the promise of God is that it's going to end soon. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to Jesus. And when He comes, we'll be at peace, and all these problems will be gone at that point. Amen. So thank you for studying with us today. Thank you, Puya. What a great study. And thank you for joining us uh, for Hope Sabbath School today. Um, I'm just encouraged, really. And I know that by the enabling presence of the Holy Spirit, we can stand firm for the truth. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, not to earn your love, but because you've loved us. Not to try to save ourselves, but because you've already redeemed us. By your Spirit, may we stand firm for the truth. Mm -hmm. And may the light of Jesus and the beauty of your character shine through. Mm -hmm. We pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School today. We're talking about the cosmic conflict and how it's not only impacted the heavenly realms, but planet Earth and how we can, by faith in Jesus, stand firm in his truth. May you live what you've learned today and go out. Be a blessing to those around you.